Welcome back to the Literacy Channel. In this episode, we explore the science of reading and what that means in terms of our classroom literacy practice. The science of reading is a term many of us have likely heard or read about at some point recently. But what exactly is it? Is it a fad? Is it a program? What does it mean for those of us on the ground working in classrooms and engaging in literacy instruction? It might sound like a complex thing, but when interpreting it, it's helpful to keep things simple and just recognise that the science of reading is understanding reading through research. We need reading for virtually everything that we do. One of our fundamental responsibilities as schools is teaching children to read. It isn't straightforward. Louisa Motes reminds us that teaching reading really is rocket science. Academic English is complex. Too many children are still experiencing significant trouble in learning to read. All children deserve carefully planned literacy instruction so that they can become fluent readers, spellers, speakers and writers. Okay, so teaching reading is complex and learning to read is challenging. So where's the proof? How do we know this? Evidence to guide our literacy practice is stronger than it has ever been before. The science of reading is a body of research that incorporates insights and research from developmental psychology, educational psychology, cognitive science and cognitive neuroscience. The science of reading has shown us what works, what's needed and where we should start. Have you heard of the reading brain? Our brains are not hardwired to read. Let's have a quick look at just a few of the parts of the brain which are heavily involved in learning to read. Our inferior frontal gyrus is our phonological processor. It handles speech production, reading fluency, grammatical usage and comprehension. Our occipitotemporal cortex is our orthographic processor. It's the part of the brain that helps us to begin recognizing words by sight. It's a little bit like a conductor. It links the different parts of the brain together to carry out the action of reading. The temporoparietal cortex is our phonological assembly area, the part of the brain that helps us form speech sounds. It's another part of the brain that we're working on during that crucial phonological awareness development. So the reading brain is a little bit like an orchestra, lots of components working in collaborative harmony, all needed to maximise our ability to decode written text. When thinking about teaching reading, we have to recognise that all brains have to be wired to read. Brain development is activity dependent. The neural circuits have to be used over and over and over again in order to become strengthened. Many things can affect our experiences when learning to read, cultural factors, economical and educational circumstances, but what all children need to learn is the same. The simple view of reading provides a straightforward explanation of the complex task of learning to read. It shows us that reading comprehension is the product of word recognition and language comprehension. Without strong skills in either domain, our reading comprehension will be compromised. Scarborough's Reading Rope explores the components of skilled reading in even more detail and shows us the fundamental skills within language comprehension and within word recognition, each which have to be developed. One week strand compromises the strength of the entire rope. Look out for more Literacy Channel videos over the next few months. We'll be unpicking a number of these crucial skills and showing how the research can support our everyday teaching and learning experiences. Five essential literacy components underpin the findings of the science of reading. Phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary and comprehension. Phonemic awareness is our ability to focus on and manipulate individual sounds in spoken words. Phonics is the study of the relationship between the sounds of a language and the letters used to represent those sounds. Fluency is the ability to read with speed, accuracy and expression. Then our vocabulary refers to all the words we need to know in order to understand what we read. Our comprehension is understanding and interpreting what has been read. So we need to make sure that our instruction for each of these elements is explicit and systematic. Phonics is certainly an important part of the science of reading, but it's not the whole thing. We need to make sure that we are applying our phonics skills to authentic reading and writing experiences. Applying the skills in context makes the learning stick. We have to remember that each pillar is crucial to reading development in its own right. But phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary and comprehension are all interrelated. So we have to make sure that our instruction reflects this interconnectivity. 
Think of reading like a toolbox. To get into the toolbox, we have to unlock both locks. Unlocking one is not enough. If all my instructional time goes on decoding, what's left for language comprehension? We must bring all our reading skills back to the act of reading. Applying the skills to the context of continuous text is essential. That's how we build motivation, success, and ultimately enjoyment and love for reading. The science of reading isn't just about building the skills necessary for reading, it's about fostering the love of reading and igniting the desire to continue to return to reading. To learn more about the science of reading, we recommend Reading in the Brain by Stanislas Duan, Language at the Speed of Sight by Mark Seidenberg, and Proust and the Squid by Marianne Wolfe. That's all from the Literacy Channel for now. Don't forget to download your copy of the slides, subscribe to our channel, and share with your colleagues.